Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at using morph targets to create a damaged version of our vehicle. So this is a common technique used in industry for uh, blending between a good part, the normal chassis of a vehicle, and then over to a damaged part of the vehicle when the vehicle has a collision with a wall or something like that. So. Um, you can see we've got a basic chassis model here and we've got a basic material applied to this and literally the diffuse is just a blue texture. So the first thing to do is to select all the aspects, all the models of the vehicle then hold shift and just clone them over. Make them copies, not instance. And then we're going to have to rename these, so we go to tools rename objects and we're just going to give these tick off base name and give these a suffix underscore morph if I can ever spell and then just hit rename now if you press H on your keyboard to pull up your select list you'll see that all those models now have the suffix underscore morph So the next thing we're going to do is actually create the damaged version of our vehicle. So we'll select all our new objects, apply an edit poly to this, and then just spend a bit of time tweaking each element of this. So I'm just going to make my damaged model. Obviously you should really be sat here with some reference some of how cars kind of look when they get damaged. But for this example, we're just going to mess around like this. Uh, tools you can use to make this simpler, things like soft selection, tick on use soft selection, and then pull in and have a bit of effect on the assets, oh, I'm sorry, on the vertices around it. Obviously with stuff like the wheel arch, you make sure you have the wheel in there just so that you can make sure that isn't kind of colliding with the wheel in any way. Now an important thing about morph targets are the object, the model that you're morphing to must have exactly the same kind of vertex count and vertex numbering, otherwise it's not going to work. So hence why I've copied the kind of exact model across. So I'm actually only going to do this on the on the door, the front door and this wheel arch. We'll put a nice big kind of dent in here. So that'll do. Got my two assets there. Obviously, if you want, you can do kind of whole vehicle. Well, I'm just going to do these two panels here. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got a damaged version and our normal version here. So the only one we're going to actually use is this one. So we'll select the with front wheel arch and then in our modifier list we'll select Morpher. Now you see you presented with a channel list with a whole bunch of empty channels. Now each one of these can refer to a different model. So for instance if you had the chassis all as one big piece you could have like different elements from this in here. So you'd end up literally cloning this model say 10 times, say one for this one, one for this one, one for this bit, this bit, and this bit, and so on. But because we've done it in separate elements, we should only need to use one slot. So in our first channel here, we need to go to the pick object from scene button and just select our damaged version. And you see now that's appeared up here and appeared here. 
So try sliding on this slider here and you see 0 is the original model and 100 is our damaged model here. And then we can do the same on our door object here. So we can go in our modifier list, select Morpher, and then I'll pick object from scene button and select the door. And now if we slide that on, you'll see that will to 100, that will have the complete damaged model. So let's quickly try animating this. So we go to Auto Key down here, and we'll select this to zero, and slide this on to say 50, and put 100 in that one. And then we'll do the same on our other door. So on zero, we'll set this to zero, and then on 50, we'll set this to 100. Now if we turn off auto key and just slide along, we'll see that now animates between the two damaged states. So let's play that, see that animating between the two. So obviously now this is quite nice, you can see it's quite easy to blend between the two shapes. But obviously if you were doing this for a game, you would blend also blend between two textures. One will be this original kind of normal diffuse that we have here and our second would be a diffuse with lots of kind of scratches and dents and bumps painted into it and painted into the normal map. So in Photoshop let's load up our diffuse And then on this, this is where we would paint our damaged map. Literally, just for this demo, I'm just going to apply a different colour in here. But the principle is, you would actually have lots of kind of scratches and bumps painted into this. And then I want you to save this as ls underscore damage diff. So now, back into our 3ds Max scene. In our Morpher modifier, in global parameters, you'll see we've got an assign new material button. So let's hit that, and you'll see the vehicle thing instantly goes white. So we'll do the same on our other panel, our door one here, assign new material. <coughs> now in our material editor, if you select a new material slot, and go to the material picker, and then just click on either one of the panels, You'll see our new material is like this. We have our channel list here, which is the same as these, only this time it has a material in it. And the first thing we want to do is choose Morph Object. So let's hit that and select our door panel, and then select the Morph Modifier and hit Bind. Now you can see this has gone white, and that's because it's put a default material in here, but we want to actually use our blue material, so we'll drop that in there. Then in map 1 we'll want to click this none tab, because number 1 assigns to our channel 1 up here. So we'll select standard, 